Hey everyone, this is Callie. Thanks so much for being here with me today. I have a video that's a little longer than my usual, so I hope you'll bear with me, but we're gonna be creating this fun Mermazing Mermaid platform pop-up card. And this scene might be a little bit familiar to you if you saw my Inspiration Week card for June. I loved making this card so much and using all of these products that I wanted to reuse them to create a video and create a platform pop-up box. So it's a little bit more involved than what you see in the card on my left. So we're gonna get started here. I've die cut this Mermazing Mermaid in white and we're gonna do some Copic coloring. I went ahead and popped out that solid piece. We're gonna set that aside and that's gonna be used to help piece together all of our images once they're colored. I'm using Copic markers now and I'm gonna speed through all of it, but all of the colors are there up on the top right hand corner for you, or you can view the coordinating blog post where everything will be listed. So the Copic coloring here with the white cardstock trim on this mermaid doesn't make the mermaid look too cute. But once I'm all done coloring the fins and all of the parts, we're gonna be adding a black outline and it's gonna make all the difference. I also added some texture on the fin there with some dots and lines and that it just gives the tail a little bit more texture. Now on this solid piece here, I'm just gonna add some dot tape runner all over it to give it some adhesive so that we can attach this outline that I've die cut in black and then we'll pop out all of the parts of this Mermazing Mermaid and then just transfer it over to this solid piece that we've added adhesive to. So we're just gonna transfer and inlay in all of the elements and you can just totally see this mermaid come together and the outline just makes such a huge contrast and helps define her features. So I'm gonna go ahead and inlay that face as well and that will finish our mermaid. And then we can work on stamping some images to fill out our scene for our platform pop-up. So I've stamped out all of the accessory images that I wanted to use from the Mermaid For You and Mermaid For You flip-flop stamp sets. And what I really wanted to focus on right here is how I stamped and added color to these solid images from the stamp set. So I'm using a lighter ink and then introducing a second ink to add a little bit more depth and dimension to the lower half of these images. So on these algae, the first impression is made with jalapeno ink, and then the second impression, using a finger dauber, I'm just applying noble fur to the bottom half to create a darker portion for the plant. And then moving on to this coral image here, I'm using apricot ink, and then for the darker lower half portion, I'm using guava ink. And then there's a second coral that's a little bit taller. I'm gonna use a base ink that is a little bit darker. So I'm using bubble gum. And then I'm gonna use the same guava ink for the darker portion at the bottom. Just thought that was a nice way to add some color and contrast to these solid color images. And I love using my finger dauber to apply the color. Now for the rest of the images, again, I'm gonna speed through the Copic coloring here. All of the colors will be listed on the blog post for you. And you can also see them quickly there on the top right hand corner. I'm gonna do some dotting on the rock and the narwhal as well to give them a little bit more texture when I'm done coloring using the same Copic markers that I used to color them with, but just adding some dots and that just creates more texture and interest. Okay, so when I'm done, I have all of my images together here and I'm just adding some more interest using a white gel pen before I move it all aside to work on our platform pop-up background. For the top portion, we're gonna be using the platform pop-up add-on die. This is where we're gonna create our sunray background to look like the sun rays are going through the water. To create that look, I'm gonna go ahead and ink blend a layer of peacock feathers ink all over a white panel. And this doesn't need to be any sort of gradient. At first, I'm just gonna apply a single layer all the way down, and then we'll introduce the Sunray stencil, and we're gonna go ahead and ink blend the first layer with some Mermaid Lagoon ink. This is Distress Oxide, so I'm gonna go ahead and ink blend from the top, and we're not gonna go all the way down, just halfway down, and then we'll introduce a even darker color in Chipped Sapphire, and then we'll work from the bottom up to blend those two colors together on the Sunrays. And when I'm done ink blending that, I'm gonna lift my stencil and then I'm gonna reintroduce the Peacock Feathers ink and I'm just gonna ink blend over the entire panel or at least the lower half to get it all to blend together nicely. 
I wanted there to be some texture on this panel, so I'm splattering it with some water using my Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer, and then I'll also splatter it with some white paint. They're kind of like air bubbles in the water, so that just gives it a little bit more interest. All right, so now I'm gonna set this panel aside because we're gonna go ahead and work on our platform pop-up, and while that's drying, it'll give us plenty of time to assemble our box. For the platform pop-up box, we're going to need two pieces of brown cardstock, and I've also die cut three little T pieces here for the inserts, and then three little sand mounds for my pop-up scene, and those are die cut in brown as well. And I chose light brown because I wanted to add texture using Copic markers later, but I also wanted the entire platform box to be like an ocean floor. Now to give the platform box more color, I'm gonna be ink blending the top scallop portion. That's gonna be the top portion of our platform. So I'll go ahead and ink blend around the top and then I'll ink blend where the slits are on these pieces because that's gonna be the box platform top, if that makes sense. It'll all make sense once I adhere it all together and you can visually see it better. The Distress Oxide color I'm using right now is Vintage Photo, and then I'm also gonna add that color to all of the little mounds that I die cut for the platform pop-up inserts as well. Now to give my platform pop-up and ocean floor a sandy feel, I'm gonna go ahead and use some Copic markers, and I'm just gonna add some more dots, just like I did on my narwhal and the rocks that I Copic colored earlier with the stamped images. I'm just gonna dot all of the outer edges of my sand where I applied ink and I'm going to use three different Copic markers. Now that might be a lot but you can cut back as much as you'd like. I just like to complicate my projects. So here I am adding three different shades of brown dots to all of my ink blended areas to create that sandy look. Now before I construct my box, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment. So I've stamped the waving hello where the center portion is for one side of my platform pop-up. And then to assemble my platform pop-up, I'm just gonna burnish all of these folds here, folding them on the score lines that were put there when we die cut these pieces. There are two tabs on each of these pieces for adhesive. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a strong double-sided adhesive. This is the quarter inch size. And we're gonna add some adhesive to those two tabs on each of those pieces. Next, we'll start putting our boxes together by using two of the tees that we die cut. And I'm folding back the score line there and adding adhesive on that tab as well on both pieces. I'm gonna take one of those tees and insert them into that little slit on our platform pop-up piece. And I'm gonna remove that adhesive that I put onto that tab, and then I'm gonna fold that little tab back and pull on that so that it's snug against our box. And I'm gonna pull it up and attach it to the bottom portion of our platform pop-up. Now I'm gonna pull off the backing on our tabbed piece on our box, and then pull it up and back and adhere it to the top of our platform box as well. And that's gonna create the first half of our platform pop-up box. Now I'm gonna construct the second half of my box. And as you'll notice here, I flip my T and I kind of put it in in a different direction, but this almost makes it look a little bit easier because I don't have to fold that tab back. So I'm just gonna remove that backing and then I adhere it right to the bottom of that box. And then just like before, we're gonna remove the backing on that box tab and then move it up, fold it back in, and then adhere it to the top portion where that scalloped line is. And then that's the second half, and we can just go ahead and adhere these two pieces together. Now it's been a while since I put one of these together, so it might look a little bit different than what you've seen in other videos. Normally the scalloped edges are lined up and then the body of the box is adhered together, but I'm kind of doing it backwards. Anyway, we're gonna add this third T section to the center of our box. And you don't have to trim this piece at all. I just thought it was unnecessary, so I went ahead and trimmed it off. It's gonna be sandwiched between the midsection of our boxes when adhered together. So right now I'm adding double-sided adhesive to the midsection of our platform pop-up. And then I'm gonna add that white T piece, and then I'll go ahead and add the other half of the platform pop-up body. That just leaves our sides now to be adhered together. So I'm gonna remove the backing on that adhesive and then match up the scalloped portions and make sure that our box is nice and flat. And then we can go ahead and do the same to the other side. You can also lay your box flat and that might be a little bit easier too, which is what I've done for my second side. 
Okay, so now that our platform pop-up is put together, we're just gonna go ahead and add some adhesive to those white tabs now, and then add our little sand mounds that we had prepared earlier. So I'm gonna pop that up because it makes it easier to expose those tabs, and then we can go ahead and add double-sided adhesive. This is the 1 8 inch size of adhesive, and then we can go ahead and adhere those sand mounds right over those edges. For that third one, I'm gonna add the adhesive on the back side of the sand mound and just eyeball it while I'm attaching it to that back white tab. Okay, so now we can pull in that ink blended piece with the sun rays that we ink blended and splattered. And now we're gonna use the add-on platform die to die cut that background piece. So I'm gonna make this background a little bit taller. So we're gonna be doing some partial die cutting to achieve that, but I really wanted there to be some head space above the mermaid as well. So what we're gonna do is partial die cut, and I'm just gonna leave the cutting plates off the bottom so that it only cuts off the top. And really from here, you can use your trimmer and just cut around the edges and make it straight. But I went ahead and placed it back on there and eyeballed it to partial cut just the bottom. So after doing that, I still need to line up the sides in my trimmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it in my trimmer and just chop off the sides to line up those sides. The score lines from the die cutting only transferred halfway over because we did some partial die cutting. So I'm just putting it in my score board and making sure that my score lines are a little bit more enhanced so that I don't mess up this background by trying to fold the paper where there are no score lines. So once the lines are burnished with my boon folder, I'm gonna go ahead and add a thin strip of adhesive at the bottom of that platform pop-up add-on. And then I'll go ahead and fold them in just a little bit to help me adhere it to the back portion of that scalloped box. And then we can reinforce the sides to get those to adhere as well. Okay, so now my pop-up platform box is finally ready for all of the images that we colored earlier. So now I'm gonna slowly adhere all of the pieces in there. I'm gonna work first with my rock, and then we'll add the star of the box, which is the mermaid. And I'm gonna be using some acetate here to apply some floating images and make sure everything looks really dimensional and the scene is jam-packed with lots of layers. Once my mermaid is in place, the rest of the images are fillers. I'm gonna add some of the green algae next, and I do end up changing my mind and moving things around. You just gotta make sure that you can cover up any boo-boos or mess ups that you change your mind on. For the seahorse and narwhal, I use some acetate on them as well to create floating images. And I'm doing the same thing with these little schools of fish. And then I'll finish up with my pink coral. And I love when you pop it up like this, it looks like she's sitting on a sand mound in the ocean. And my daughter likes seeing it that way too. And that finishes my Mermazing Mermaid platform pop-up card for today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you're interested in the products I use, be sure to check out the links below. Everything will be linked for your convenience and the details will be on my blog as well. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'll be linking two more videos for you to enjoy if you'd like to see more. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye everyone.